of the Small Farms Association and Breedsmith People Before Profit TD for Dublin South Central. And we start uh, this segment of the programme with a clip from Breedsmith's questioning of Enda Kenny and the Dáil on Tuesday on this issue of bus earning. Let's have a look. Uh, Taoiseach, over the last few days I've had the honour and privilege of meeting some very fine um, Irish men and women indeed on the bus air and picket lines. Um, one of them, a man called Tommy St. Ledger in Broadstone, has worked 51 years of his life in bus airing, is due to retire on June on a glorious pension of €97 Euro a week, having given his entire adult life and some of his childhood uh, to bus airing. Uh, Rory, from your neck of the woods in the west of Ireland, takes home about €600 Euro a week, and that includes all the premiums and his overtime, and he's a man with a growing family in college. Michael, who's a new worker, takes home about €450 Euro a week, and that includes all his premiums, and he's a young man with a mortgage and uh, children so small that he's now doing picket duty in the evenings to avoid having to pay childcare while he's on strike. The National Transport Authority for whom your cabinet has responsibility have deliberately uh, swamped the main bus routes between the cities of Dublin, Limerick, Dublin Cork, Dublin Galway, etc. with private operators. They have over licensed to capacity beyond 100% of what's needed. And at the same time, this and the previous government have consistently cut the subsidy uh, to the bus airing. The subsidy bus airing get as a public transport company is 12%. Ireland gives its public transport companies the lowest subsidy of most of the developing Europe, European countries. On top of that, we subsidise a, a social function of the transport to allow for free travel. And I have a letter here from Minister Varadkar which clearly shows that we give to the private operators 70% of a subsidy for that free travel and 40% to bus airing. This is not a level, play, a level playing field. The crisis in bus airing is manufactured consistently and continually by this government and the previous government. Can you justify cutting 30% of the wages of those people whose earnings I've just described? I understand your, your legitimate, your legitimate um, um, comment in respect of the drivers here and those who work for bus air. Last year the taxpayer provided €230 million Euro to bus air across the PSO scheme, the free travel scheme, the capital and the school transport funding programmes. And that's a significant amount of money which has been increasing over the last number of years. Um, funding for the public service obligation uh, units have, has increased over the last two budgets. But subvention is provided only for the PSO services. It cannot by law be provided on a commercial service like Expressway. And that's where the difficulty is. Breed, before we get into, the, into discussion on this, just could you clarify a few things for us? You said that uh, in Ireland the subsidy is only 12%. Are you saying that 12% that's 12% of the total expen of the total expenditure of uh, bus iron, is it? Yeah, it's 12% of the total cost of running the service. Um, uh, now, obviously, in his statement there, he included capital expenditure when he mentioned the figure of 230 million. Now, capital expenditure isn't included in the subvention for running the service on a day-to-day -day basis as part of a, a public service obligation. Capital expenditures is okay. separate. And you said that in several other European countries the subvention is far higher than 12%. Yeah, I looked at the example of Belgium, for example, it's as high as 70% plus, uh, Holland, 40%. Um, and if you look around Europe, it's generally much higher. I think Britain is quite low, but is not as low as Ireland. And, and just one other uh, further point you said that uh, the uh, free travel. Uh, a month to a subsidy that, 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 the, that people can uh, travel on private op bus operators, um, private buses rather, uh, free and the state pays and that comprises of 70% of their income, is that what you're saying? No, no. Let's say um, a, a journey costs 10 euro. Yeah. The, and, and you've got a free travel pass. The state will pay to a private operator 7 euro of that 10 to bus air and it'll pay for. Now, not all private operators uh, avail of the free travel scheme. In other words, they don't, they don't give it to customers. They don't, you know, they say no, no free travel passengers on this bus. 
Um, but when they do avail of it, they get 70% of it back from the state, where bus air and get 40%. OK. Does that strike you as unfair, Patricia? Well, I don't know the details about the, the subvention, but certainly in terms of the deregulation of the market that is done, uh, we are where we are. I think certainly the government cannot intervene and subsidise one company over another. They will end up in the High Court. I think from a business perspective, and I represent small businesses, we need it to be resolved. The massive cost now to the rest of the economy um, is, is, is intolerable. Like you're, you're looking at images every day of people trying to get to work, spending their entire salaries trying to yeah, make alternative and why there's a strike when people paid, uh, being paid, for instance, a person with a family uh, uh, being paid 600 euro a, month, uh, a week, somebody else paid 450 euros a week and lo lots of children. People can't live on those wages and they want to cut them by 30% now. Well, remember that half the private sector worker workforce are employed in small companies. 900,000 people are employed in small companies who have the challenges of trying to remain profitable and not be loss-making. During the recession, we saw all of those businesses and their employees having to take uh, to, to adapt, to change work practices, to become more efficient, just so that they could keep their jobs. So the idea that we can subsidise 2,600 people just because they work in a particular company. Okay, but that can you the exact understand same, how people... The exact same thing applies to every okay, other worker. Can I just ask you, could you envisage living, uh, I don't know if your children are, are not, but living on 450 euros a week, could you? Yes. You could live on 450 euros a week and uh, with, with a few children? Well, let's let's go back to the old age. Our, you know, the old uh, issue around the incentive to work is the incentive to work there, because you know, when you talk about people on welfare, which with two children, people say, oh, well, you have to earn more than forty thousand euros in order for that to make sense. So we we need to look at all those issues. We but, need to look at how the welfare system mind, interacts mind, with the. Do you, the do you piece. think that people can uh, have a decent life on families can have decent life on an income of four hundred and fifty? Euros a week, and that well, family what's the hourly rate of that? I don't know how. Children. What are the hours that they work? What is the hourly rate equation? I don't know, but this, this but that's the important thing yeah, because if we're benchmarking, we have the second <coughs> highest minimum wage, so presumably these workers are <coughs> paid a lot more than that across okay. Europe. So how can all of the other uh, workers across uh, uh, Europe sorry, live? Breed, the person that you spoke spoke about earning 450 euros a week, you said it was a man, I think, uh, and that he had children uh, and. He uh, he uh, was on the pick line only at night because he didn't want to pay day, uh, um, daycare for the children. Um, so his wife is working as well, so she's working during the day. So obviously they live on a bit more than 450. But it's interesting the way Patricia argued, you because she argued back with you because she said, if we're benchmarking, we're not benchmarking. And that is not the purpose of my argument. I'm not trying to compare... Michael on the buses with um, somebody in the retail sector that Patricia represents, although that's another day's work for the comparison. What I am saying is that they are cut to the bone as it is. And to say to workers who do a full week's work, plus their overtime, plus their shift pay, that we are now going to impose up to 30% of a cut on you is just not realistic. And what you will do is you will drive those workers into a financial position where they then become entitled to and reliant on family income supplement, which is paid by the state. So ultimately, we'll be subsidising the workers through a different kind of a payment from the state. So here is the question, the real question here is that the government are saying, hands off this dispute, it has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with them. Because the government have deliberately set out to uh, introduce the private sector into certain routes and in a certain manner that has made it very, very difficult for bus air to compete. At the same time, they are now saying we are going to penalise the bus air and workers for the failure of the company to compete. Now, that's just not on. And it's not on either to threaten the public service element of public transport. It is so important that people who live on pensions or who have disabilities or school children who are relying on that service or people who are isolated in rural towns and villages have access to a regular dependable bus service. And you cannot wind down the company at the expense of the workers and then say to the public, well, uh, sorry, it's them workers that are to blame. And then on the other hand, risk driving those workers into poverty and into back into sort of welfare uh, support by the state. Patricia, how do you say that? Well, I think that...
applauded. Absolutely. Okay. And there, You're not talking yeah, to welfare. There are You're problems the with that, yeah. Uh, uh, yes. If that is a much worse than for taking risks. Yeah, but we can do... Anyway. Yeah, I mean, Tricia keeps asking about the hourly rate. The point, Tricia, is, and you keep... Do you know what it is? The, the point, let me answer you, please. The point that you keep deflecting from is that <laughs> these workers in bus Aaron cannot afford a 30% pay cut. They I'm just, just can't. asking whether you even that know what the rate is. That, that, no, I don't know what the hourly rate is. For bus drivers, for mechanics, for clerical mm -hmm. workers, I don't. Now, I can go off and inform myself. I know a lot about bus work because I worked on the buses. My father worked there for 40 years. I mentioned a man at the beginning of that clip who will retire on 97 euro a week after 51 years of his life. My father retired after 41 years of his life on 13 punt at the time. On a wallia, greedy workers who are holding the country to ransom and the cause of the debt. They need to be protected. Their lifestyle needs to be protected. And they provide a very fundamental, important service to this society. Public transport is a fundamental important service and there should be more of it, not less of it. And that is what I will defend. But I will say, and finally, if, this, if we're running out of time, the government needs to get involved. Shane Ross cannot continue to say, nothing to do with me, I'm Minister for Transport, but it's nothing to do with me because there's a national transport strike and nobody seems to be able to resolve He's it. He's still in Brazil, isn't he? <laughs> He probably well, is in Rio de Janeiro. Well, he I probably thought his passport is. was taken off of him. <laughs> Either that well. or step aside. Well, yeah, and people are complaining that he doesn't attend meetings. How oh, could he? He's in jail in But look, it is well. disgraceful. He earns well. about, what, I don't know, 150 or 120,000 a year? 150 or something yeah, like that, yeah. For being a minister. That doesn't take responsibility for the National and Transport Network. And can look network. forward to a pretty healthy pension. And, and he ignores... And, 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 you know, I, I got a quote... Uh, from somebody else, from another trade unionist tonight, who told me, remember in 2011, Shane Ross described CIE as a swamp of waste and skullduggery. He came into the job with an attitude towards public transport, and he has stamped that attitude all over this dispute. And okay, he, needs to, he needs to be brought to the We have to go to a break then. This dispute absolutely needs to be solved. It should be.